Hey guys, it's been a really troubling past couple of weeks for me. Um, a couple of friends, their daughters, um, who were very fine young Christian girls, have decided not to be Christians anymore. They're the ages of 13 and 16 and don't really want to be a part of um, the faith or God or any of that anymore. And it was kind of troubling, kind of upsetting. I went on YouTube and, and I'm just inundated with lies. Um, the Quran is proven in the Bible, Jesus in the Bi in the Quran, um, Mormons, atheists, just everywhere I turn, lies and more lies. And I was feeling a little upset, a little frustrated <clears throat> that these good children were being lied to. So I got into some back and forths with some atheists and <laughs> although I wasn't outright cruel or, or uh, hostile towards them, I wasn't kind or gentle either. And two of them didn't even have a valid arguments to make. And like one, for example, said that <clears throat> compared God to Zeus. And he said, you know, don't give me a shabby argument like that. Does Zeus have two billion people following him on the planet today? Did Zeus write the number one bestseller of all time? Um, are people willing to lay down their lives for Zeus in our culture today? Um, if you're not going to at least have a serious argument, then I'm not going to um, respect you enough to continue debating anything. And him and another fella no longer posted a response to me personally. They just responded to themselves so that I wouldn't see it. And I thought, they're not really interested in, in searching out truth. Um, they're on here picking fights. And one fellow... Um, it was on a video about whether or not God exists. And... Uh, yeah, it was a uh, <clears throat> scientist explaining how the nature of the universe limits God to being um, almost a mindless entity. He didn't like the idea of a creator God, but a mindless um, kind of a haze God he was okay with. And I made the comment, you know, man defining God, how ironic. Because I really find it ironic that the creation takes it upon itself to define the nature of the creator. And this man's a scientist. He doesn't understand the vastness of creation, the complexity of it. If you look into um, string theory and quantum physics and dark matter and energy, I mean, we're living in an infinitely bizarre universe. There are so many unanswered questions. Even though the modern science we have today can't tell us why we die or why we get old. Um, there's many things modern science just can't answer. Can't tell you why we actually need to sleep. Um, those are just quick examples that science is so limited and people are unwilling and unable to accept that in our culture. So I made this comment and he writes back, well, how, how would you define God then if it's not man? And I said, well, I don't know. What about a series of ancient writings that document historically his involvement in mankind, his creation, and his plan for man's salvation through his son Jesus Christ. And right away the atheist comes back with why this is all wrong and can't be true. And I said, you know what, I don't need to get into a, a back and forth with you. Um, interpret it any way you choose to. It's your business. And left it at that. And he posted a comment, I think I win. Well, you know, as, as much as I knew it was not going to get me anywhere debating with this fellow, uh, there, there's still a competitive streak in my nature, my fallen nature, that um, I don't want to be the loser in anything. And I know that's a, my fallen carnal nature. So I got back on the, the interwebs and asked him, what, what exactly did you win? 
the right to ignorance and then I explained um, the historicity of the Bible, the fact that there's thousands of prophecies that have been fulfilled in Scripture. It's like no other book. And the big back and forth began. Now, he's in it to win it. He's not going to back down. He's throwing all of these different points out. And to every one of them, I'm throwing out logic. He said that the Exodus, there was no historical evidence. So I throw out, how did they get from Egypt to the Middle East where, where they are? <laughs> are we going to assume UFOs beamed them over? There was, there had to have been an exodus. And, and this kind of logic never got a response. I, I was completely ignored on those points. He'd just go and find something new. I imagine from different uh, atheist websites, all the talking points. And he said, listen, um, this went on for quite a while. And, and I hate arguing. I, I get on there and my inbox has more... Um, angry back and forths and it just turns my stomach. I don't like doing that. So I open it up and I, I said, before we continue with this pointless back and forth, um, I need you to explain something to me. I am on here in the hopes of persuading people to turn to Jesus Christ in order for their souls to be saved. Why are you here? Why are you doing what you do? And I want an honest answer from you. It's the last I ever heard of him. And I posted that question on Yahoo Answers. And it always gets deleted. It's a question atheists absolutely hate. Um, that personal reflection. Why are you doing what you do? Would you march into a... Uh, let's say in the hills outside of the town you live in. A group is meeting who believe in pixies. They're all dressed like pixies. They dance around and everything else. I would be, I would find it humorous, and I might feel a little pity for them, but I certainly wouldn't be angry at them. It, it's not a natural response. So therefore, that anger is proof that there's something more than what they claim that they they have wisdom and logic, and they're only trying to help us poor fools. But <clears throat> in the course of all this. Um, the Holy Spirit, thankfully, is trying to open my eyes to some things. Um, why am I on YouTube? What is my goal and purpose here? What am I trying to accomplish? If I wanted lots of viewers, that's simple. Either create controversy or, or uh, discuss current events and, and popular topics. And if you do this, you will get lots of viewers. Um, if... You put out a video of a final call, you'll get over a hundred viewers. Um, depending on the content of your video, um, I find that if you're genuinely trying to encourage and strengthen the body of Christ, you're <laughs> you're reducing your viewership to under a hundred for sure, which is really sad. Some of the best videos on YouTube have such minuscule viewership. And the back and forths really got me thinking. One fellow in particular, um, I made the point, uh, this one fellow said, um, the Bible talks about in Matthew a census that took place during the birth of Christ, and this isn't recorded in Roman history, one of their arguments why the Bible is false. And I said, well, frankly, I'm not in the least concerned if, if the historical account is only in Scripture. It doesn't bother me at all because... Look at Jericho for for centuries. It was only known in the Bible. And people mocked and laughed at the Bible until the day Jericho was dug up. And one of these fellows, one of these atheists, writes back, um, Jericho was one of the longest standing ancient cities um, occupied by many different peoples. Therefore, Jericho wasn't dug up. And it took me a minute to get my head around what he was saying. He, he's saying that Jericho has always existed, that it's still standing today. And uh, I thought, where on earth would he get an idea like that? And Wikipedia, the very first line, said almost word for word what he said. But what he didn't understand was, 
Yes, in antiquity, it was one of the longest standing cities, but it did not stand until the present day, and that Wikipedia article never said that either, just that it was one of the longest standing cities of antiquity. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you see that a lot of these people aren't even looking for truth. They go and grab the quickest proof, the qu quickest so-called argument, to uh, say that you're wrong. They, they aren't concerned about the quality of their arguments, about the the uh, truthfulness of it. There's no research into what they're saying. I really don't understand why they're doing what they're doing, except for one thing. They want to tie the hands of the true believer. They want to keep us busy. Let's keep them embroiled in back and forths. And if if we've got them occupied with this, then they're not going to be out there preaching that hateful gospel. And And in this way of looking at things. In this context, I started to look at some of the other things going on around me, the big final call feud, and a couple of other teachers who, who were putting out videos without wisdom. They lack discretion, and they're stirring up controversy, and they seem to enjoy the controversy and uh, thrive on the back and forths. And frankly, the Holy Spirit makes it very clear to us that these uh, arguments are not pleasing to God. When I was having discussions with the Jehovah Witnesses, I found my mind drifting to, oh, I could say this, I could say that. And, and my mind wasn't on the Lord. It wasn't on encouraging and edifying things. And I knew it was wrong. I need to focus on the Lord and put my trust in Him and not reflect continuously on pointless arguments. So I started to see how so many people whether it's Mormons or Muslims or atheists, Jehovah's Witnesses, or the false teachers, the, the people who claim to be Christians but have all kinds of strange doctrines to teach, how all of these people work together to tie the hands of the saints. And then, thankfully, the Lord kind of opened my eyes to, to a truth that I'm, I'm starting to apply it to my life now. Um, Paul says that we are to become fools. If we, if we are wise, we are to become fools so that we can be made wise. Now, I have to be honest. I don't consider myself a fool. I consider myself wise. And everyone I talk to, if they're honest, would say the same thing. I don't know of one person making a video who would say, yeah, I'm stupid, and believe it. <laughs> they might say it, but to believe it is a different thing. I believe that I'm a wise person. So the Bible is teaching me, I must become a fool in the ways of the world, in the wisdom of the world, in order to become wise to the things of God. And <clears throat> as I read 1 Corinthians 1, Paul is talking a lot about this, about the wisdom of man, and how foolish it is, how useless it is. And I have become more and more aware of the fact that if I argue with the wisdom of man, I accomplish nothing. It lacks power. We reduce ourselves to being no different from all of those cultic groups that are working against God because they're using the wisdom of man to attack us. And if all we return with is the wisdom of man, then we're in the same boat. We have something wonderful that they don't have and can't comprehend, and that is the power of God. The power of God is in the gospel, by proclaiming the gospel, and by proclaiming something no other group has, the word of our testimony. It's what Jesus Christ did for me. So I'm looking at my involvement on YouTube and my the, the things that I endeavor to do, and I'm saying, why on earth would I waste my time and allow my hands to be bound with pointless back and forths and, and meaningless arguments when really all I need is the wisdom of a child all I need is to be humble and simple and stick to the truth, the gospel, Christ and Him crucified. And let the power of God minister to people. So this is a starting point. This video isn't complete. It's not like I've reached that point. But to let you know where I'm going with this, and uh, I'd be delighted to hear some of your thoughts as well. Um, I hope this blesses you. I hope um, you know we can pull some fruit out of our time on YouTube, we can bless the Lord with what we're doing. Have a great day.